Hello, this is Eric White. Today I am going to discuss the issue of data binding a drop down list content control in OpenXML word processing ML. There are a variety of types of content controls that you can insert into a document in word processing ML and you can data bind most of them. There is at least one type you cannot data bind. We'll discuss that in a bit, but we're going to take as a primary example data binding a drop-down list content control in OpenXML Word Processing Mill. First of all, let's go look at the varieties of content controls and what the markup looks like for those, and then we'll discuss how to data bind them. I'm going to create a Word document Call it test zero one. And I'm going to insert some content controls. When you click on the developer tab, you can see all of the content controls that you can add up here. There's the rich text content control. There's a plain text content control. There's a picture content control. Here we have a building block gallery content control a combo box content control, a drop-down list content control, a date picker, and a checkbox content control. And then over here we have the legacy ActiveX controls. We're not interested in those at this moment. We are really interested in the new modern content controls, and these are the ones we're mainly interested in those that we can bind to data in a custom XML part. So first thing let's do is let's just explore the markup for these content controls for a minute. Let's go, I'll put in something called rich text and I'll make that a rich text content control. Put in a property and I'll call it rich and then a plain text. I'm going to skip picture for right now. I'm also going to skip the building block gallery kind of control. Let's move on to the combo box kind of control. Now, when we have a combo box content control, we can specify the items that can be selected in the content control down here. So I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to remove that and I'm going to add some new values. So I'm going to keep this really simple. I'm going to say the display name is Eric and the value is E. And the display name is Bob and the value is B. I'm only, I'm putting in a value. I wouldn't necessarily have to do this, but I'm doing this so that you can see the role that the value plays and the display name plays with regards to data binding. And I'll add one more, which is Jim, and I'll make its value J. And let's go ahead and pick one of these. I'll just pick Eric. So this is our combo box content control. Now let's add a drop down list content control. I'll make the title and tag be drop. And I'm going to do the exact same thing here. Uh, only this time I'm going to make the display name Cheryl and the value is C. And Elizabeth, value is E. And Anne, the value is A. So, and I'll pick one of these. So now we have a drop down list 
content control also. Let's go ahead and save these. I'm going to start Visual Studio 2010 and open this document in the OpenXML Package Editor Power Tool. So we can start looking at all of these content controls. First of all, we see the rich text content control. One thing you'll notice is the rich text content control is actually the default variety of content control that there is. And you can see how that goes here in that when we come down here to the plain text content control, we can see this element text right here. This indicates that it's a plain text content control. We don't have the equivalent variety of element up here in a rich text content control. So we have the text content control here dropping down. Now we have a combo box content control and here we can see our three list items. There's the display text and value for each one of the items that we've added there. And you can see that the actual contents of the content control, in other words, this right here, contains the paragraph with the display text in it. And then dropping down a little bit further, here is the drop down list content control. We have this drop down list element that looks almost identical to the combo box element, except that it has the different root element of drop down list as opposed to up here we have the combo box element. And again, we have the actual contents of the kind of control. This is the display text down here. So we can see the varieties of content controls that we created. None of these are bound. We have up here, we have a rich text, we have a plain text, a combo box, and a drop-down list. Well, let's next, let's go make a data-bound version of each one of these. I'm going to save this. Here I have a document that has some data bound content controls. Now, whenever I need a document that has data bound content controls, I go to an old blog post that I wrote a long time ago. This blog post is posted on my old MSDN blog that I had when I used to be an employee of Microsoft. This blog post, it explains pretty much in detail exactly what you need to do to create a data bound content control. And then the other thing that it has, is it has an example down here. You can download this example right here. And if you just download this example and open it up in Visual Studio and press F5, it will create a document that contains data bound content controls for you. So that's where I got this databound.docx document right here. And just to review, uh, let's look at that document really quick. You can see uh, it has this enable editing because it originated from an internet location. So what you do is you right click and tell it to unblock that file. And now we can open it. And here are the various content controls. There's a name and a company and an address and so on and so forth. You can see this particular example puts these content controls inside of a cell, inside of a table. That's a minor variation of how to do things. It, we'll notice that when we go look at the markup, but it doesn't really impact us, really. So. When we look at the main document part, here we can see the data bound content control. You'll notice it's a plain text content control in this particular case. And then further down here, it has the contents of that content control. And this is what I was going to mention that you'll notice is because it's in a table, we have this extra, we can see the table cell element right here. 
no big deal. All of the remaining content controls, they're the same. They have the exact same structure as this content control. And then if we go look at the custom XML part, we can see here we have the root element of the custom XML part and then name, company, address, city, state, country, and postal code. And up here we can find these XPath expressions that tell us how to get to the elements in the custom XML part that these content controls are bound to. Let's go about the process of making one of these into our combo box content control that is data bound. I'm going to open up the main document part in the test document here just so that I can look at the markup for this drop-down list content control. Here it is right here. So what I want to do is I want to grab this drop-down list element right here and I'm going to replace this text element right here with the drop-down list element right there. And what I'm going to do is I am going to change this to Cheryl. And then the other thing that I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to come to the custom XML part and I change this. And this doesn't have the value of Cheryl in it. This has the value of C in it. And this is where that value component of the markup comes into play. The value is what actually gets placed in the custom XML part and the display text is what gets placed in the paragraph that is the contents of that content control. So now we've done it. We've created a data bound drop down list content control. Let's uh, go ahead and let's close these out. Let's open up our data bound content control. Now if I come up here, we can see, certainly enough now, it is a drop-down list content control, and the value is Cheryl. I can change this value to Elizabeth, and if I click Save and then click Close, let's now go look at this again in the OpenXML Package Editor Power Tool. We still see our drop-down list element here. The value is now Elizabeth. And if we go to the custom XML part, we can now see that the value in the custom XML part stored in this name element is E, which corresponds to that item in the drop-down list. So that is how you create a data-bound drop-down list content control in custom XML. The combo box content control is exactly the same. It's just you change the name of that element and then the variety of content control will change. Some people may have noticed you cannot actually in Word 2010 create a data bound content control for a rich text content control. It has to be a plain text. So I know for certain that you can create a data bound content control for plain text. I know you can create them for combo boxes and I know you can create them for drop down list content controls. I am not completely sure about the other varieties of content controls. I'm pretty sure that you can create a data bound content control for a date picker content control, but I'm not sure about the image content controls or the gallery content controls. That's a project for a different day. Anyway, it's going to be a short and sweet screencast today. I just wanted to go through the process of creating a data bound content control for a drop down list. See you next time.